to Collider Mailbag, the weekend show where we take your viewer submitted questions. All you have to do is send us emails at collidervideo at gmail.com and we pick them out. We answer them here on this weekend show. We answer them on Movie Talk as well. This is more of a laid back show. As you can see, my name is Dennis Zen. Usually I'm here with Christian, but today we're joined by uh, Mark Riley. Hey, I'm not Christian, but no. I'm happy to be here with you guys here on Mailbag. And as always, we are joined by Wendy Lee. I'm still Wendy. Hi. Yes, and who's kind of like joined us on, on, on Movie Talk every day as the chat room representative. You also throw down the band hammer That's right. on people. Like if you, yep. you, you, you get out of line, she drops the band hammer. On Thank you. God for Wendy and that band hammer. Yes. So let's get started with the first question. All right, the first one comes from Luis Rosero, who writes, Hey, Collider writes, Now that early reviews for X-Men Apocalypse has received meh reviews, do you think Fox will scramble the next couple of weeks and do some last-minute edits to touch up things such as the ending? Thanks, guys. I don't think so, because it's too late. It's it's too late in the process. If you understand how the filmmaking process works, it's like you can't, once they get picture lock, then all the other things like visual effects, sound mixing, sound effects, all that stuff gets done because once the edit's complete, they can do that. So any last minute changes are kind of at this point, the only thing they can do is add stuff. I know later in the game, they're either fixing visual effects or like they'll shoot and add on a post credit scenes. But in terms of changing stuff, I think that's a lot harder to do. And at this stage, it's, it's just way too late. Even hypothetically, if they could, it's too short a time to change anything significant because when you're talking about the whole ending, it's, it's not so, like I didn't, I didn't hate uh, X-Men Apocalypse. I actually enjoyed it. I just didn't think it was as good as I wanted it to be. You can check out our non-spoilers review on the YouTube mm -hmm. channel. But I felt like, like the changes that would need to be made would be so significant, you can't just do them in a week or two. Yeah. Mark? Yeah, and I think the only thing that they could change is maybe having all the mutants go to a shawarma <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and eat afterwards. Yeah, it's way too late in the game. And especially, I mean, they released this really early for for the mm -hmm. critics so they had a lot of faith in it i think and i just think it's maybe just not hitting it like you said didn't you didn't like it that much uh compared to maybe days of future yeah Past. i love days of future yeah Past. and this i did too little, okay so this I, was more disappointing to me yeah I'm, I'm excited to see it nonetheless and i'm gonna see it but yeah way too late in the game yeah wendy what do you think like is it is it too late to change uh, unfortunately, I think it is. I mean, the movie comes out the 27th and we're, uh, this is like, what, the 15th or something like yeah. that? Yeah. So it's way too late. And I remember also when I watched Goosebumps way back mm. when, and I saw it like two months before it came out. Wow. And I wasn't a fan of the film and I had asked Schnepp, do you think they'll change the ending? He goes, no, it's too late. I was like, but it's two months out. He, goes, he said, no, it's too late. So I just think that it's more work then you know i mean the ending i think in order for a studio to really put in the time and effort to change it the ending has to be atrocious and that you know opinion has to be unanimous across the board it has to be yeah. a world war z situation where they have to <laughs> right n they have to actually reshoot the ending mm -hmm. after they had already kind of gone into post and, and and delayed and then and then done that or like similar to your example i saw gravity almost a year before it came out and then when wow. i watched it in theaters the only real significant changes were the visual effects. The edit sure. was pretty much the same. There might have been some minor changes, but in general, it was they, they finished off the VFX because we saw some previs stuff on there. I'm sure they fixed up the, you know, did the sound mixing. But even then, the sound mixing was pretty decent. Uh, yeah, it's just it's just too late. Yeah. All right. What's next? Andrew Pickering writes, hi, guys. I was nine when I saw Star Wars A New Hope showing my age. When my son Colum came the same age, I had to choose between the prequels or the original trilogy first. I picked the prequels. So now, do I show him Rogue One or the original trilogy next? What would you guys pick? Keep up the good work from an English fan who loves the show. Well, Mark, uh, what, what do you think? What order would you, if you had kids, what would you show them? I mean, I'm an original trilogy guy. I'm going to start with the original trilogy. When I have kids, no matter how many of them, I'm going to start with A New Hope. Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi, then the prequels. And then for me, these new Star Wars stories add an interesting layer to the the, the, the design of the order. Um, 
which actually makes me think, would you go then Force Awakens, then prequels? That's mm. another interesting one. But I would show the, the I would get all of the episodes out of the way. Do it however you would want to show your kids. You know, you obviously started with the prequels. I would start with the original trilogy, then the prequels, then maybe go to Force Awakens, and then the Star Wars stories. That's at least my opinion. Okay, I have it similar but a little different. So I would go original trilogy first. Okay. Then I would do Force Awakens. Okay. Then I would go back to do the the prequels, the prequels. and then uh, Rogue One. Yeah. So it kind of it goes. I kind of want to go the original trilogy and then kind of complete at least up to where we're at. Then go back, which, you know, that might not work because maybe, you know, they want to see the, the second episode. So mm-hmm. they want to do Force Awakens last. I, I could see some merit in that doing yeah. Force Awakens last where, last where you go. Maybe original trilogy, prequels, Rogue One, and then do Force Awakens. But that means you got to wait till Force uh, uh yeah, Rogue One comes out to right. actually do that order. Exactly. And uh, my mom thinks that uh, Rogue One is actually a sequel to Force Awakens. <laughs> That's so oh, no. Th- th- that might be difficult. The, but Yeah, they have that problem right now. Once yeah. they show Vader, hopefully that will change that. Wendy, what would you show your kids? Uh, I'm dead set on showing them 4, 5, and 6 first. Yep. Dead yep. set on just the way It's just the way I saw it, and so I probably will want to try to have them follow in my footsteps. So I would do... Four, five, six, one, two, three. But then I would throw uh, the Clone Wars and Rebels in there too. Okay. Oh, good idea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Nice. Where would you stick that? So Clone Wars. Would you have them watch Clone Wars is Episode between... Two and then right. watch Clone Wars? Yes. Watch Clone then Wars. Then watch Revenge of the yes, Sith. Yes, mm-hmm. Have you heard of the Shotgun Order? No. It's like you watch. Maybe I think Sam Witwer was talking about that. Yeah, I think it's you watch. Um, you watch New Hope, then you watch Empire Strikes Back, then you go back and watch prequels. Prequels. And then oh. come back after Revenge of the Sith, watch Return of the Jedi to see it all wrap up. I don't know where you throw Clone Wars in that because yeah. that's a big, tall order there. Yeah, because yeah, I, I just started. I just started Clone Wars. That's right. I just I finished season one. I'm on to two, and I kind of watched them in the order they were released. But now I'm looking at uh, some of the things online that say, okay, this is actually the it's order you, you watch should it. watch it. Yeah. And so I'm I'm going back and watching some of the episodes that even though they're released later like in a season three they actually take place in before season one so yeah. that's what i'm doing right now i don't it is a lot of stuff it's, it's a six, six seasons of how many episodes like 20 something episodes yeah, per, season. per season yeah so it's all on netflix now though so you mm-hmm. can binge but yeah i had trouble with the order i watched them in release order because yeah, that's just i'm old school yeah, and, and despite, you know, my major criticisms of the prequels, I still think people should watch them just for the story. Because I think, I, I've said this before, the story themselves of the prequels is actually good. It's and really it's so, good. And it's something that people should know with just more the execution yeah. that, that, that needed to be fixed. So I still recommend Star Wars fans watching the prequels, even though in my mind there's certain things that, that are changed. Yeah, I'm with you. All right, what's next? Bryce Ratliff writes, Hey Collider crew, love the show. You're all doing amazing work. My question involves a potential video game movie that I think could be fantastic. I know that Warcraft and Assassin's Creed are going to be a huge determining factor in the future of video game movies, but I want to hear your opinion on a different video game property that I think has massive potential if done right. Mario. I know that years ago there was a horrible live action Super Mario Brothers film that failed for many reasons, but I was wondering what your thoughts would be on an animated version of Mario. There are many different Mario games with fun characters, stories, and worlds. While it's too goofy for live action, I think that a vibrant and zany world of Mario could work in could work wonders in 3D animation. In a dream world, I would love for Nintendo and Disney to work together and maybe get directors like Phil Lord and Chris Miller to make the film. Thoughts on an animated Mario film? I like the way Bryce thinks because, one, he's saying an animated film because yeah. we have Sonic the Hedgehog coming out and they're talking about making it live action. I don't know why it's going to be live. No. It's not, I'm sure Sonic himself is not going to be live action, sure, but they're sure. going to have it in the live action world. doesn't make any sense. Yeah. A, a 3D animated Mario makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. I mean, Mario is the most iconic video game character of all time. And so making a movie that, that fits within what 
what the audience is and how it's going to be received. I think that's the only way to go. And yeah, Lord and Miller would be great for it. I mean, too bad they're busy with <laughs> Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, the spinoff movie with Han Solo. But I, I, I like that idea. Yeah, right? I think I think it's a great question. And I think it's a great idea to do the animated, especially uh, with the Lord and Miller. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love the Lego movie. So to take that kind of uh, way of looking at it and putting it into a Mario movie, there's a lot of possibilities. I don't know, who else would you think could do it like justice, like uh, Lord and Miller? Um, I forgot who directed Wreck-It Ralph, but something like that. Because Wreck-It Ralph call. had oh, Sonic yeah. briefly in it, and they yeah. asked why Mario wasn't, and they were saying they wanted to save it for to have him a bigger role than just a cameo. So maybe when they make Wreck-It Ralph 2, which, by the way, I don't know why they aren't... I know they're right? making it, but why they aren't rushing to The director to get for Wreck-It Ralph is Rich Moore. Okay, well, how about him doing a Mario yeah. movie or at least including Mario in a significant way on, in the sequel? What and do you think about a 3D Mario animated movie? I would see that way before I see a Mario live action. Yeah. I remember seeing that atrocious thing years ago, and I was like, what is this? This is not at all like the game that we played. So I think in order for Mario to work, it would only be in 3D animation. I really don't see how they can, not even like... Like um, how they, uh, what is that called? Kind of half live action. Well, I guess it's called live action, right? If they make they, certain they still call animated. Yeah, they still call it live action. Like I, yeah. you're talking about like something like chipmunks. Right, Smurfs. right, yeah, right. But I just don't see that working. Usually films like that kind of turn me off. They turn me off. The only yeah. one that ever worked for me was Paddington. The rest of them, and even then going yeah. into it, I was like, oh. Yeah. Don't want to see it. If we're talking like Nintendo properties, I would love to see Legend of Zelda before I see Mario, but that I would want could Legend see, of Zelda live action. I, yeah, I could see that live action. Yeah, that that le that story lends itself yes. to a great live action. But do you action. really want to see a Mario live action? <laughs> no, like that's terrible. No, I think because of the <laughs> <laughs> It's a Mario. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, because of the, the world and the and the zany characters, like the, like you said in, in your email, it, it just lends itself to a great animated movie. You got the worlds. You could do Mario Kart. You could do Space Mario, whatever, all the, the different ones. I'm, I'm all for that. All right. What's next? Yoshi. All right. <laughs> Derek F. Walker <laughs> Jr. writes, what are some of your most pet peeves of things that take place in movies? For me, it's the premature celebration. Like every time they have a monster or alien ship with their most powerful weapon, they always celebrate and then they say it's, there's not even a scratch on it. Or every time a movie launches a spaceship into outer space, they clap, but seconds later it always blows up. <laughs> Does it? I don't know if it always blows up. Yeah, the movie's over then. Yeah. I, I don't know, but I, pet peeves. That's a good question, actually. <laughs> and I'm trying to think. Um, I always, I notice this maybe it's because I, I, I love movies, I love writing, so I know the exposition setup mm -hmm. where it's like, everything stops and the two main characters go okay so let me get this straight we gotta go rob a bank get two people to get the car and then do something with a gun and blah mm. blah 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 and it sets up kind of the plot that always stands out to me but in the hands of a good skilled writer and director it kind of works but i don't know what do you guys think uh wendy do you have one i have one but i want to hear you yours go last. first all right for me it's like the slow motion shots that last just too long in mm -hmm. those like climatic battle scenes or just the climatic where you're like well, let's hurry up and it's like <laughs> and i'm like come on just get to the point just show us what's how it's going to end and it's i feel like i'm seeing it more and more recently in these movies where i'm just like oh, i could have gone to the bathroom and come back and they still be doing this mm -hmm. dennis for me it is something that bothers me and it is supermodel hackers <laughs> so I am not I am with you. I'm not saying that hackers in real life can't be attractive. Look, Black hat. I'm sure they are wide range, just like everyone else, right? Sure, sure. Let me list off some of the, the <laughs> hackers from movies in, in one television one. Chris Hemsworth in Black Hat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hugh Jackman in Swordfish. Yeah. Sandra Bullock in The Net. Okay. And then uh, the girl that plays Masande in Game of Thrones, she was a hacker in Furious 7. Okay. And mm -hmm. then if you guys ever watched Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, Chloe, Bennett. Chloe Bennett plays Sky slash Daisy, and she was a hacker. Okay. Come on. Yeah. Really? What's uh, the girl's name in Transformers? Because that's the one that immediately jumps out to me. The very first Transformers. Megan. Oh, sorry. No, it was, uh, it, she was beautiful, you know, and she was just like. Yeah, she, yeah she's Australian. She, she was Australian. She's Australian. And maybe she wasn't hair. a hacker, but she was a, definitely a computer Let's expert. See if I can find it. And it was like, you know, the, the Transformers sound was going, and she's like, oh, yes, I know exactly what that is. If we go, but I did it. And I'm like, eh, I'm not yeah, buying it. I just, I'm not buying it. 
It's crazy. It's like it's it, a good one. <laughs> yeah, because it bothers me every time. Like, because okay, I didn't know that uh, the girl that plays Masande in Game of Thrones was in uh, Fast and, and Furious Seven. Sure. So when they're like, "Oh, we gotta break up this hacker," da da da, and the scene comes, she's like trapped in that car, like hand, whatever, in there or not car, big trailer truck or something like that. And right. when they break in, she comes down like. Really? <laughs> really? Come yeah. on. That was movie Riley, pretty. you're thinking of Rachel Taylor. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Very, she hasn't done much. Pretty. She's she's probably she's, at home. Oh hacking. no, guys, she was Jesse. She wasn't Jessica Jones. She's Trish Walker. Oh, that's right. Well, I take it all back. Oh. I like you. <laughs> I like you a lot. But not as a hacker. But not as a hacker. <laughs> oh. All right, what's next? Renee Baker writes, Hey, Collider crew, big fan from Montreal. We could talk for years about undeserved Academy Award nominations, but what about an undeserved Razzie Award nomination? My pick would be Stanley Kubrick, worst director for The Shining. What are yours? Thanks and keep the sweat floating. Yeah, that one's a good one. Like, really? Stanley yeah. Kubrick for The Shining? It's like, it's... That's that the shine. I'm not a horror person. Everyone knows that. But the shining and uh, this movie session nine are my two favorite horror movies. Mm -hmm. And the shining, it's the way that he directs the movie. That is <laughs> the best part of it. So definitely agree with you there. For me, it is uh, Tom Cruise got a Razzie nomination in 2005 for war, war of the worlds. Not Spielberg's best movie and not, not Tom Cruise's best performance, sure. but it wasn't anything that was Razzie worthy. And then also, 2004 Ben Affleck for Jersey Girl. That's actually a movie that gets unfairly derided, and I actually like that film. It and I don't think Ben Affleck was bad in it. I think that was on the ride of. There was like this whole like two or three years where he was nominated every year for a Razzie. It was like just because of Geely, just because of his relationship with Jennifer Lopez. It was like the cool thing to. Oh, Ben Affleck is bad. Blah blah blah. And so they nominated him for that film. What about you? Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna look right at you, Razzies. And I'm going to say, how dare you nominate Cocktail for Worst Picture <laughs> for a Razzie? Come on, Cocktail. It's fun. It is fun. It is it is a slice of 80s that is in a nice time capsule with Tom Cruise and his feather hair. My God, it was Mixing amazing. Mixing drinks. Mixing drinks. He's dancing. And, I, yeah, I had to look up some of these because I, 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 I don't really follow the Razzies because no. I think it's a little bit – come on. It's so hard to make a movie – that when you then get it and then you're like, sorry, worst movie ever. Here's an award. You're like, wow, man, way to make it hurt. Mm -hmm. But yeah, but so I had to look this up in, in Cocktail. And I love this site. It says, what should have uh, won a, a Razzie? Caddyshack 2. Yeah, that it came out the same year. That should have run a Razzie. I don't know. Wendy, what do you think? I'm not really into the Razzies at all. I know that Sandra Bullock like actually went and collected, uh, collected her for yeah. All About Steve. So I would say maybe Sandra Bullock uh, for Demolition Man. Yeah, she no, like she, yeah, she was She's great. She was good in that. Yeah. I, I like that film. So, yeah, some of these are, I, I think, are unfair. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. what's next? Jeray Finch writes, Finch here. Hey, guys, been watching for years. If, big if, Marvel slash Disney and Fox ever struck a deal in the near future, do you think Hugh Jackman would come out of Wolverine in retirement and portray Wolverine in at least one Marvel slash Disney slash Fox film? Thanks, guys, and stay filthy San Diego. I personally don't think it will happen, not because he wouldn't want to, but because if you're talking about this collaboration, if this is going to happen, it's going to probably happen way, way down the line. Let's yeah. say 15, 20 years from now. By that time, they're going to have already recast Wolverine, and then he'll be too old to play Wolverine unless they do an old man Logan thing, which all signs point to they're going to try and do that for this yeah. next Wolverine film. Yeah. So I just don't see it happening. Riley. I mean, I think let's do a what if scenario okay. and, and just go off of that. He did come out saying that he would love to see Wolverine in, in a Marvel oh, movie. Yeah. He said it a number of times. So let's say old man Logan comes out. It does great. He retires. He walks off into the sunset and a year later they announce, I think he'd definitely come back because he would want to do it. And if it was, it's soon enough, but yeah. you're right, Dennis. It's going to be so long before this might ever happen. There might have to be a lot of failed X-Men movies before finally, you know, Marvel's like, you know what, can we get this back like we did with Spider-Man? Then that might, you know, 
he's going to be recast by that. Yeah, Days mm-hmm. of Future Past did so well. Yeah. Deadpool was a big surprise hit for them. Yep. I mean, X Men Apocalypse hasn't come out yet. It's going to do well though. I think it's going to do it's even despite well. the the mediocre reviews. I think sure. it's going to do okay at least. So you got to have some failures. You have to have like two or three bombs, and then maybe you're thinking about doing what Sony did. And even them, it, Amazing Spider Man Two wasn't a huge bomb or anything. No, like that. it made money. It made money. So. Strangely, yeah. it made money. Awful. So all right, uh, what's the next question? BPDSCM2019 writes, Hey Collider crew, I'm a huge Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle fan, and there's a question I've been wanting to ask you guys. Do you think that if the new Turtles movie being released in June fails, that it could spell the end for the franchise? They've already gone through so many reboots in both film and television that I'm afraid they may stop making more Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle content. Thanks for answering the question. I hope you have a great day. Well, I think it's similar to the last question where I don't, think one failure will do it one i don't think tmnt is going to fail i think it's going to do pretty well i don't know what you mean by reboots i mean i think on television yeah there was a bunch of cartoons and animated series but on movies it's only really been one reboot we had the the ones in in the 90s and then they did this this one most recently with you know, yeah, instead the of the animated rub- one too, mm-hmm. right? And yeah, movie. I don't, I don't count that though. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't I like, count yeah. that. So no, and then also the the other thing is merchandise. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're selling so much merchandise, t-shirts, toys, figures, whatnot to the kids. They love it. They're making money off that o- as well. Even if if the movie ticket sales aren't as good as they want them to be, there's there's so much merchandising. Yeah, Riley. Yeah, I think it it's going to take a huge fail. If, if they're going to reboot anything. And I think they listened to the... I actually liked the first movie. I think you guys yeah, yeah, are yeah. right. Didn't you yeah. like it? I, I, yeah, I, I semi-enjoyed it. it. I always say I like... Yeah. I didn't hate it, and I there was parts of it that I enjoyed. I mean, there's parts that were stupid, but, sure. <laughs> but that was going in... You were expecting that. It was much better than I expected, and I wanted... I'm looking... I don't know. Looking forward is a little strong to <laughs> yeah. say about <laughs> Team NT2, but let's say I don't mind going to go check it out when it comes out. Yeah, I'm going to go check it out. I'm kind of excited. Mm-hmm. I think they heard. I want to see Krang. I, yeah, Krang. I want to mm-hmm. see Krang because I grew up with the toys. And I, I, Bebop and Rocksteady. Bebop yeah. and Rocksteady, though. I can't stand those wanted <laughs> posters, which is the actors before mm-hmm. they turn. I'm like, oh, get rid of those. But I mean, I, you know, I was surprised by the first one. And I was like, eh, it wasn't terrible. I think they needed to focus more on the Turtles, which it looks like they're doing. So if we're going to get a, a, a semi-decent uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, it's going to keep going, and it will take a gigantic failure, like Fantastic Four level mm-hmm. bad uh, mm-hmm. for this next movie for them to even consider rebooting. Wendy, what do you think? Um, I don't think this movie is going to fail. In fact, um, and I really didn't like the first Turtle that much, but I didn't hate it. I am slightly more excited about this one than the first mm-hmm. one. I don't know if it's because... Stephen Mel's in it, and That's I got excited. Good thing about yeah, it. Casey yeah. Jones, they put back in. So I don't think they're ever going to stop making this content. They're just going to keep rebooting for to fit the generation. So they have that yeah. um, new Nickelodeon's uh, animated series that I've been watching. I think season three is the last one I watched because I don't have cable, so I can't continue to watch it. But I got really into that. So I think maybe that kind of uh, excited me more for this film coming out. What's interesting is I actually used to read the black and white comic books before the cartoon. So to me, it started off as this really indie comic book series that only very few people knew. And then when I heard they were making a cartoon, I was like, really? Mm -hmm. That's surprising. You have to remember, too, this is not in today's age where like all this genre stuff is prevalent. This was back in the early 90s. Yeah. And then they made a cartoon out of it. And, you know, at first you get all you know fanboyish you're like oh my god this is not like this or whatever but at the same time you know you're like oh cool they're on because you know in, in the comic books you know all the bandanas in the comic books yeah they're, they're all red they're, they're all, red. all red yeah they I was all gonna say but then they had to distinguish it there's no krang there was like uh in the comic book series there was a krang like character not even character race basically oh really they, they took that and turned it into a character um Shredder is completely different. <laughs> There's a lot of differences, but you know, I've kind of grown to to appreciate the charm of the. I mean, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle comics was like rated R. Like, it yeah, was, I remember. I, I remember these comics when you were talking about. It. I didn't get into them like you, mm-hmm. but they were they were gritty. Yeah, cut, you know, cutting people's heads off. Oh yep. You know, slicing people bloody. It was supposed to be kind of inspired by Frank Miller's Daredevil and mm-hmm. Ronin, and like it just. 
yeah, the the cartoon was obviously for for more for kids, you know, Turtle Mobile and all, all mm-hmm. those things. You guys have a favorite turtle? Uh, in the comic books, it was Leonardo. He was the leader. He was the most honorable one. Uh, Raphael was always kind of the bad boy. They've kind of followed that. Um, yeah. In the in the movies, I like Michelangelo just because he mm-hmm. gives me comic relief. But Leonardo overall. Yeah, and in, in all the movies, I I'd gravitate towards Raphael for okay. some reason. The bad boy. He's the bad boy. He's got a chip on his shoulder. Yeah. I especially liked him in the original the 90s action. one yeah yeah, yeah yes. the 90s one that was a great because he i just remember that rooftop scene where he's taking on all of the foot clan mm-hmm. and he's by himself and he's and he's giving it to him pretty good but then he gets his his ass whooped yeah. so what's surprising about that first movie is actually very faithful to the comic book is it really i mean yeah. not completely but much more faithful than the, the cartoon ones yeah. and that's why you had like those scenes mm. in them all mm-hmm. right uh what's next all right, this one comes from Joseph Codron, who writes, Hey, Collider Gang, been enjoying your videos for about a year now. Keep up the great work. Now, my question is a little touchy, but I believe it's very interesting and wanted to hear what y'all think. Now, with great characters played by great actors in the MCU, such as Chris Evans and Robert Downey Jr., I was wondering what will happen if one of these awesome actors would pass away, God forbid, but what would happen? Do they kill off the character, recast, or make a reason why the character isn't around anymore? Love to hear your thoughts. Thanks. Well, this is a nice way to end. This is our last question. Nice way. Nice upper question to end <laughs> off on. But the answer is they would just recast. Yeah. But what they would do most likely is they would try to find a way to write out the character for a while. Yeah. Then recast them and bring them in at appropriate time. I mean, you saw that happen with Heath Ledger and mm-hmm. the Joker. When he passed away, at first, everyone was like, there could never be any Joker ever, 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 ever again. Heath Ledger is the first, the, or not the first, but the last person to ever play this role. You know that's not going to happen. They're right. not going to sit there and go, oh, wow, this is the most popular, uh, you know, a villain for the most popular comic book character. Mm-hmm. They're not going to throw him away. Right. They're going to wait a while. So that's what they would do. They would write out, oh, Captain America, he went See, deep secret undercover mission he'll be back mm-hmm. five years from now they'll mm-hmm. recast and bring on that's what what i think Riley. yeah god forbid i'm knocking on all sorts of wood yep. that these guys stay with us and it's not like it's uh it's marvel as a brand so that brand continues every day in the comics so they're not going to just get rid of iron man they're gonna do exactly what you said dennis they're gonna recast it and it's not like paul walker with fast seven where they kind of have them go off into the sunset, and that's a nice close for a character that wasn't based really on any comic book that lives on past these movies. So, yeah, they would just write it in, a very a good story, hopefully, and then recast years later. Maybe after, especially if we're talking Marvel, maybe after a lot of uh, kind of things happen that kind of round out a phase and then, like, reboot a character actor with other characters that might, you know, contracts up so they're going to bring in a whole new set of actors which is always interesting we always wonder what's going to happen with mcu after all these great actors contracts are up yeah and not the, dying yes not dying. in that scenario then you would see them brought on much quicker because sure. it is just a recasting thing it's not a disrespectful of, of someone's passing it's more of okay their contracts up they yeah. didn't want to come back or we couldn't negotiate so Let's, you know, let's, something like the Terrence Howard, Don Cheadle situation. Yeah. They just recast it. They couldn't come to an agreement. Mm-hmm. And the movie came out, you know. But that wasn't a, a death or anything yeah. like that. <laughs> Wendy, what do you think? Well, I think, I mean, these these are just major characters. So if, like, something were to happen, I just, I, yeah, they would have to, you know, put that, that brand or that character on hold for a few years. Mm-hmm. Wait. Recast it. Now, if it, this, a death some, or something like that would happen during production, I think that's a whole different story. The only way I can see around is if it were to happen to Iron Man because he's an Iron Man suit, mm. um, you can get someone whose voice would sound similar to Robert Downey Jr.'s mm. and then just do it that way. But with any other character that has their faces showing, that would be much harder to do. And they would mm-hmm. have to either find a way to explain that why they're not present or, I don't know, reshoot. And also, mm. what at what time? Is it the very beginning of the film or mm-hmm. is it the end? I'm talking about right. the production yeah, schedule. Yeah, yeah. You have... Yeah. Not a death, but you had what happened with Dylan O'Brien in the Maze Runner, this sequel. Like oh, yeah. He got hurt, and it wasn't far enough where they could finish it. And then he's an integral; he's the main character. So they're like, "All right, you're indefinitely delayed." Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
All right, guys, that's it for this episode of Collider Mailbag. I want to thank people joining us at the table. Wendy, where can people find you? Oh, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat at Wendy Lee Zaney. And Mark Riley, where can people find you? You can find me at Instagram and at Twitter at Riley Around. Oh, Wendy. Oh, is, is oh there we okay go. Over there? Yeah. Hey. He oh. cut to me, and then they, then he had Wendy's thing up, and then he cut to you, and then... Oh, it's anarchy. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. It's anarchy. Yeah, so yeah, go follow me on Twitter. Okay. <laughs> and I'm Dennis Zen. You can follow me on Twitter at ThinkHero or Instagram, Dennis.TZNG. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. It's YouTube.com slash Collider Videos. We've got a lot of good stuff coming up. We just had the schmo down on Friday. We have Ooh. Jedi Council, Heroes, Movie Talk, TV Talk, what we, Deadpool Commentary, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, Dance, yeah. Trailer Reviews and Reactions. We, we, got it, a- we got it all. We yes. got it all on Collider Video. It's yeah. some good stuff happening. I over think there. people, everyone here, including myself, we just like we when we go to sleep, our, our hands are on the on the computers at the yep. same time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, like I've been learning editing to editing and writing. Yep, I've been learning to write while I'm sleeping. It's like, really it's Adam's, a great talent. Adam switches in his sleep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, guys. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.